three, by four, by five. What if I actually wanted to build 200 of them? That is how much titanium I would need. Get everybody, this is Mooper Sega on behalf of Mooper Corp. Welcome. If you saw the previous video, you would have seen that we were left with something like this, where we can type in an item like this and be returned its type ID and the type ID of the blueprint required to make that. Right, the next logical step, and I apologize, but I need a little bit of a script here so that I don't get off track or too far off track. So the next logical step for us is that we find out what are the quantities and what are the actual materials required to go into an incursus. And is there a quick, easy way to do this? So I have to preface as well that we will be using Office 365 functions or functions that are available only in Office 365. These are called dynamic array functions, things like filter, unique, xlookup, um, sort, all these kind of things. Now these are these are functions that I'm, I'm, I'm sorry are only available in Office 365. So if you are not running Office 365, you're gonna have to find other ways of doing this. Be they manual, it's very easy to actually do the filters yourself and just drag and drop uh, regarding the information that you require or use things like pivot tables and that kind of stuff. If you are uh, versed in Excel, you might have been, you might be aware of something called array formulas. That might be somewhere that you can do some research as well. But moving right along, the primary function that we are going to be addressing today is, is one called filter. Now it has three arguments and by arguments I mean the things that you put in. Like if I was to actually say filter and tab it, it has array, include, if empty. So in other words, there's three different things that we have to, to give this function for it to work. Yeah. So the filter will be like something like the array and then what to include of that array. So, and the next part is if empty. So what to show, what to show if none. Yeah. So those are the three arguments there. Okay, so when it comes to building this one, let's get cracking. The it, I'll, I will show you manually what we're doing here so that if you need to find this information, you know how to do it yourself. But ultimately, we are just going to be using the function to do it for us. So well, all that it is doing is it's heading over to this array here, right? It's getting C and D and it is filtering by the type ID and by the activity ID. Now the type ID, is going to be, what was it, 941 for incursus. So in other words, it's filtering out anything that equals 941. And it is then, so that has returned all our uh, type ID information. So in other words, to make, uh, to, to, to use or utilize this uh, blueprint ID, um, it requires 34, uh, sorry, it requires 13,333 of this item. 11,111 of this item. Now I know that this is titanium, that this is pyrite and mexalom and whatever else. But we can do a call on that later to really get away from numbers if you want to see the actual, you know, if you want to see the actual uh, names of these things. So the next step that we want to look or the next filter that we want to apply is that actually an activity ID, I don't want to see anything that pertains to invention. In other words, anything that is activity ID 8. I only want to see things that is activity ID 1. Mm -hmm. So the next step here is that the function would do is I would say, well, you know, of this, of, of all this information here, all I actually want to see is C and D. So I just want to see the, the material type ID and the quantity required, yeah? And that's all that, that's all that this filter function is actually doing. That is that is really all that, that it is doing. It's just that it's doing it dynamically. So if I was to come back here to the to the main sheet here, I'm going to show you I do actually have a little visual that I can turn on on the screen. It kind of scrolls across. It might help just a little bit, but the filter formula will run something like this. Filter the array that I want to return. 
is that C and D. So I'm going to say industry activity materials, uh, material type and quantity, or or you could just say, or you could just say C and D like that, which is probably preferable. Really, just uh, scroll up to the top of the screen. You don't want to do it like like that. Uh, you really want to get C and D for now because there's some absolutism that you need to address if you're doing it the other way. Now, what do I actually want to include? So what is the filters that I want to apply? And because we're working in an array function, we're going to do something like this. I'm going to do, I'm going to put my uh, conditions within parentheses like that. Um, now I'm using the asterisk because that is the and operator. If you wanted to have all operators, in other words, I want um, this and this and this or this. And you can have any different uh, arrangements of those operators but because we've got two conditions uh, you can see up the top that i've got i will put the first condition in this first set of brackets and then the second condition in the second set of brackets there so the first condition is this it is where the type id is equal to so make that um, industry activity materials aa make that absolute is equal to and i'm going to come back to my actual uh information here which is this if it is equal to item lookup C2, which is the blueprint ID, and I'm going to do the next condition here, which is go back to industry activity materials, go to activity ID, make that absolute, is equal to, in other words, I only want to see information where activity ID is equal to one. All right, so those are our two conditions there. If I now move on to our next argument, which is if it is empty. So if it doesn't find anything at all, what do you want to show? Which is just blank. I want nothing to show if it is blank, yeah? I close that off with a right parentheses and you can see on the screen there, that big formula. You can see that as it's scrolling through, here is our first condition in the first set of parentheses where we're looking for the blueprint ID to match what is in type ID. And here is that asterisk to say, and this is the second condition that I'm looking for, which is an and condition. And then there is that little comma and the final condition, which is if it is blank, show a show, like if nothing is found, then show blank. So now that I press, oopsie, I've got some remnants formulas there. Um, now it has returned two columns like we asked. We asked it to return column C and column D, which is over here, which is column C and column D. And it is returning and it has applied the filter for us. So it's only returning things where the, the type ID is equal to 941 and where activity ID is equal to one. And honestly, that is where you could leave it. That is where you could leave it entirely. Yeah. I will show you what the next step might be. Like you could break these down. What if you actually only wanted to find, you could you could break this up, like the, the actual include inclusion part, the actual filter is the same, but what if you only wanted to return the type IDs, yeah? I could say, well, actually only so column C to C, which is one column. So it's only returning the type IDs there. What if I actually only wanted to see, what if I actually only wanted to see column D and D. In other words, what if I only wanted to see the the quantities? Then that is the information there. But what you can do, and I'm gonna very quickly, if, if that is all the information you need, I will say right now that you have seen the video, that is, that is it. Go and build stuff with the filter function. Um, bye, come and say hi on Twitch, Mondays and Wednesday nights. But I'll show you one other thing that we can do. So I'm essentially, what I'm what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take that first function and just as we had presented it there, I'm gonna say C to D, but I'm actually going to go C to C, yeah? And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab that formula and I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it there. So now that I have two, now that I have two separate, two separate tables here. I'm going to do a little bit of something else. I'm going to now make this D to D. So yeah, we want to return, we want to return the quantities here and the type IDs here. But actually, here's here's the next crazy thing that you can do. If you use X lookup, which is another dynamic array function, I'm essentially going to look up this array within an X lookup and return that at the same time. So I'm going to embed this array in an X lookup. So I'm going to go something like this, X lookup like this, and then the lookup value 
is that entire array because this XLOOKUP can actually deal with entire arrays as inputs. So the next argument for this is to, where do you wanna actually look it up? And I wanna look it up in inf types where we find our type IDs and our type names. And I wanna look for, I wanna look for that array in type IDs because that's where, these are type IDs that we, that's the information we have. We have type IDs, but we wanna return type names. So the, the first, uh, the lookup array that we are looking for is type ID. And then the next part is inf types. So what do we wanna return? We wanna return inf types and then type name. And the final arguments for xlookup is, is another if not found. So if not found, return blank. Um, the, the mode, do we want an exact match? We do want an exact match, which is zero. And then we wanna search first to last, which is one. Like that. So what that has done there, all in the one long formula, it has filtered. So it has found anything that matches the blueprint ID and the activity ID. It has then taken that entire array and run an X lookup on every one of those values to return the actual type name of each one of those type IDs. And now we have the names of the items beside the, beside the very same filter on the quantities. All right, so that we have, there's all the numbers that pertain to that. And the only last thing, that's on this here is another jump off point. If you wanna go and play with this, by all means, the only other thing that I will show you that you can do here is actually something like this. You go equals, actually, let's put a quantity up here. Let's say that here's where we wanna keep our quantity. I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna go over to Format Painter and, and copy that over there. I'm gonna lose that formula bar, sorry about that. But let's say that I wanna build one. I wanna build one in cursors. So what I can do here is I can now, on the back of this formula, add a little multiplication here. Times, times whatever that number is by the quantity that we wanna make. And I wanna make that absolute in the cell, like absolute reference that, because that doesn't wanna move as we change things. Okay, so yeah, the value is exactly the same, right? But what if I wanna build two? Now I've got, I've got the same number times by two by three, by four, by five. What if I actually wanted to build 200 of them? That is how much titanium I would need. Now I get it, this is not including material efficiency formulas or any of that kind of stuff. That will come down the line. This is really about showing you guys how you can use these dynamic array functions to get the information on blueprints so that you can start building them and start building out your mega cool systems. So. Thanks guys. If you are available, come and say hi on a Monday night or a Wednesday night. We are hanging out on Twitch, a whole bunch of spreaders, terrific community. Come and talk industry, come and talk systems. Uh, you will be welcome. Um, but until then, thank you. And we'll catch you around. Ciao, ciao, ciao.